Hey guys, I'm Chris. I'm David. And today we're giving you the real deal on I don't feel at home in this world anymore. So, I Don't Feel at Home in This World Anymore is a 2017 indie film. Uh, it started in Sundance and it actually moved and transitioned over to Netflix. Um, and so, we're bringing it to you today. Talk about it a little bit. It is a pretty interesting film in its own right. Um, it really starts way back with Blue Ruin, a, a movie helmed by a completely different director, but starring the director of this current film. His name is Macon Blair. Um, and keep this in mind because we're going to make some comparisons between his two films, Blue Ruin and Green Room, and Macon Blair's newest movie, uh, because there are a lot of similarities and a lot of uh, little detractors here and there because of the discrepancies. So, in the lead roles, we've actually got Melanie Linsky. Most people would recognize her as the crazy lady from Two and a Half Men, if you're into that kind of thing. Yeah, Rose from Two and a Half Men, Charlie Stalker. Right. Um, you've also got Elijah Woods, um, Lord of the Rings, uh, the new Dirk Gently show. Uh, you've seen him in a bajillion different things. He's, he's Frodo. Great guy. I mean, come yeah. on. So, the movie starts off with our character, uh, Ruth who is a CNA who generally has a shitty life. Uh, it just kind of starts off going about her day, shitty patients, just shitty people spoiling like books and stuff for her. Just general shittiness all around. And she comes home one day after just a crappy day and finds her house broken into and some of her stuff stolen, namely her laptop. And she, you know, is freaked out, vulnerable, like we all would be. She decides to enlist the help of the police to investigate in this, who generally don't give a shit. Mm -hmm. um, and she decides to take matters to her own hands, team up with her neighbor, who is the eccentric Elijah Wood, who's incredible in this movie. But wonderful. Absolutely great. Uh, and they essentially team up and decide to track down her stolen shit and take down the bad guys along the way. Right. Uh, and, and really, what plays out from there is what you'd expect, but what you wouldn't expect. Um, a la Blue Ruin again, Green Room. Uh, another one of those anti-action movies, one of those more authentic kind of films, where it takes those uh, exceptionally vulgar and violent scenes and puts them in some kind of uh, uh, realistic context. The big thing, I'm going to start with a pro here, is what it really does well. I feel like... It does actually attempt a couple different genres outside of that formula and kind of add on to it. Um, there's an early scene where her house is being burglarized and she goes in after it. And there's almost a very horror-esque uh, camera view to it. There's some really suspenseful music, just, just very melancholic and minimalistic. And uh, there's actually a scene towards the end. I'm not going to spoil it, but it's almost like a chase scene. And that actually plays out very suspensefully. And there's a lot of drama created uh, just through the camera work and the directorial work. Mm -hmm. um, and, and there's little bits and pieces like that throughout. Uh, it's just one genre or another that it likes to kind of pick and choose and sort in. And it works rather seamlessly. It's not always uh, transition as well as one would like. And that's also kind of one of the big negatives, but it is nice to see uh, another director kind of paying homage and also adding on with their own unique sense of style. This movie does have very competent directing. Oh, yeah. It's all shot very well. Um, I have no complaints about that. It does pay homage to a lot of, uh, you know, of those like said, horror movies and just other films in general. Definitely. Um, at its core, and this is kind of one of my problems with the movie, is that it's very much an indie movie and suffers from sort of indie movie tropes, namely like the the music. There's musical montages several times in this movie. Yeah, multiple. Enough to where I noticed that, yeah. they, hey, look, another montage, where the music plays very loudly, um, the scenes play out kind of quietly, there's no dialogue or anything, it's very, like, they're introspective scenes of our characters, sort of to help add depth to what they're going through. Um, and the way it all plays out, I feel it really slows down the pace of the rest of the movie, because where at its core, it's you know a revenge tale sort of. Uh, she wants to get back at the people who robbed her. Right. She teams up with Elijah Wood to you know get in there, and I love those moments in the movie where they uh, kind of team up and take the, go to someone's house, go to one of the thieves' house, and take care of business. Right. Those scenes play out funny. They're like funny as hell. They usually subvert your expectations like most of this movie does. Right. But then there are the moments in between those scenes where you get. A lot of those, like I said, montages of loud indie music that don't really go anywhere. Um, a lot of dialogue scenes that really, I kind of get what he's going for, 
where its characters are kind of talking about nothing, almost something like you'd see in a Quentin Tarantino movie. Definitely, just, yeah, those di those that. long dialogues, like those long monologues, really like, add nothing. They yeah. meander. Uh, they, they just do. seem like word vomit for long spans of time. Like somebody just kind of hit the randomizer on Wikipedia. Everybody knows the type. I'm, yeah, you get a a little small conversation about cat meat at one point that just I felt was out of place. I mean. Most of the dialogue yeah. is out of place without any context or within context, which is kind of one of the biggest detractors. Um, I did want to kind of add that, based on just what you were saying, mm -hmm. I, I feel like this is actually one of the biggest things that uh, Macon's really not getting based on his earlier work with Blue Ruin director Solnir. He, he's just not understanding uh, the, the bare minimum here. He's not getting the entire formula. Uh, he's trying to add back in these indie tropes that Solnir himself took out to add juxtaposition, and he's actually just kind of self-parodying himself at this point. Um, and that's one of the biggest negatives that I have with the film, is that even though he adds some interesting elements here and there and adds his own unique touch to it, he also doesn't seem to understand the biggest criticisms about indie films. And... It, that sense of self-awareness it just doesn't seem to be present all the time. Absolutely. I feel like what Jeremy Solner did with Blue Moon and Green Room was he took these they're simple stories at their core and he sort of removed the fluff. He gave us the human character moments, you know, we got to know uh, through quieter moments and not through just dialogue, yeah. like how these characters are and the situation they get put into, these outlandish situations that we could ourselves be put into and we'd probably react similarly to these characters yeah. because we just wouldn't know what we're doing. And those movies worked. They were like, you know, shorter, concise movies that play with a simple plot and really delivered. And this movie tries to do the same thing, but like you said, is adding a lot of like the indie movie fluff to it that really pads out, I think, the, the runtime and the, it kind of throws the pacing off a bit. Uh, you also get a lot of like tonally jarring moments where you'll get like some of the quirky humor that is genuinely funny at times, especially oh, yeah. with Elijah Wood's character. Oh, yeah, Elijah Wood's character is um, phenomenal. And it kind of doesn't quite mesh well with when the movie takes a left turn into some violent scenes or some more serious dramatic it, it scenes. It does get very dark comedy-esque, yeah. and those feel like complete left turns. And I understand that when you, when you almost intentionally go tonally inconsistent, mm -hmm. you're bound to have sequences like that, but it makes the pacing extremely choppy. And when you have a formula that's all about minimalism and you decide to take a maximalist approach to it, you're going to get pieces that don't fit. And that's really this movie in a nutshell. A lot of really good ideas, a lot of really bad ideas, more good than bad in the long run. And I think that's what's really to take away from this film. But yeah, long story short, a uh, very solid film with a... A couple different major caveats, just be forewarned. Uh, definitely check it out if you have a spare couple hours uh, for something on Netflix. It is streaming there. Uh, I believe it is also up for purchase sometime soon. So, yeah, I, I think personally I would give it uh, a B-. minus. I think that's where I stand on that one. B- minus sounds about right. I think I'm flirting between C- plus and B-. minus. It's uh, definitely above average for sure. It really is. It, uh, it is, like, you know, Bacon Blair, it's his first movie he's directed, and he did do a really good job. I, I felt think so. The writing, maybe the screenplay could have been a little tighter. Definitely. To really help us uh, get... You know, just more, focus the story more. I feel like there's a little too much padding. Right, like, find out where the pacing of, lies. A lot of meandering going on in the movie. That, sometimes intentional, sometimes not. Yeah, um, so in the end, probably give it, yeah, I'll, I'll go with a C plus. It's not a very too, no, I'll give it a B minus for Elijah Wood. Elijah Wood's fantastic in this movie. He's the most memorable part, in my opinion. Besides his character, um, you probably won't remember too much of it, but it's not, again, not a bad movie. I'd say on it, like a, just if you're bored one day and you pop it on Netflix, boom, there it is. You have 90 minutes to kill and it's, you could do worse. Exactly, yeah. So as far as anything's concerned, Elijah Woods with a morning star, not a bad way to spend an hour and a half, two hours. So um, Correct. Okay, well, as always, I'm David. I'm Chris. And you have just gotten the real deal.